welcome to another exciting edition of the James Show, full of rain and loud babies and everything else. What do we got going on today? I'm going to talk a little bit about more my week with the Switch and Zelda and some of the peripherals that I have recently gotten for the Switch. Got two more loot crates to go over, another gaming and another regular. And we're also going to look at a card game uh, we recently got called Five Minute Dungeon. All in this thematically exciting, rainy episode of The James Show. So first, let's take a look at a loot crate. This is a loot gaming, the most recent one I've gotten. And there you go. What's up first is the t-shirt. Now, I think the t-shirt is pretty cool with one small problem. It's kind of got the same theme as a lot of the Zelda, uh, the uh, title screen, kind of like a, a water painted kind of look, or not water painted, but like brush strokey kind of look. The thing is, is if you look at it, it seems to me to be highlighting Link's ass a little bit too prominently. He's turning around with a bow behind him, but so I don't know if I want to really run around like at work because we work. We I wear Loot Crate t-shirts all the time because you know we're cool like that. I don't know if I want to uh, feature Link's butt quite so prominently while at work, but still cool. Then of course we have a hat from World of Warcraft. And I'm wondering if it's, yes, oh, of course, excellent, excellent, excellent. Double-sided, so you pick your side. Are you doing Horde or Alliance? I thought I only got an Alliance one, but I got Horde or Alliance. That's pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, there's that. It's a little small for my big fat head. Eh, maybe not. It's okay. Yeah, it's a little small. That's okay. Pop. Yeah, I got a haircut, as you can see. My hair is not any thinner. It's just shorter. Um, what else we got in here? We got a pupper decoy dog from Metal Gear. Eye patch and all. Arf. Wow, his head is really off center. Like that eye patch, his eyes would not match up if this was. So, mm -hmm. poor puppy. We got a Pitfall Harry. Classic Pitfall. Canteen. One side has like the Atari Pitfall type, you know, poster logo game art. Yes, I just a spit fall. Ugh. And it smells like plastic. What are you doing? It's a canteen. The uh, theme this time was wild. So, you know, Horde and Alliance in the wild world of Warcraft, I guess. <laughs> uh, Zelda, Zelda, Breath of the Wild. Pitfall Harry's out in the wild. They do a lot of exploring in a. New Metal Gear Solid, so, you know, it's all about exploration, really. It says wow. And, of course, the, it's a compass. Pretty cool. Uh, they sent a, yay, 5th fifth fifth anniversary of Loot Crate. Here's our new logo, which I should put up here. Now, boink. Ah. So, yeah, new logo. Then we have Blue Crate Gaming, of course, doesn't do uh, magazines, they do posters, which is neat. We got a uh, Archer, could be Link, could be just a Ranger or whatever. Shooting at a burr. And he's got a Wolf Doggy friend. And the other side just talks about. Uh, you know the stuff. And uh, three lucky winners of this, uh, of the epic drop, would have gotten Breath of the Wild on a Switch. 
I didn't get Switch on launch day. Um, I stocked now in stock.net and um, I stocked now and saw that Walmart near my work had like 18, uh, got 18 uh, Switches in one day. I went in during my lunch break and there were five left. Got me a Switch. Cool deal. So let's shift gears from Loot Crate for a second. We will be back to another one to talk about my Nintendo Switch. So I've gotten a couple of new peripherals for it. Firstly, the Pro Controller. Nearly as hard to find as a Switch itself, if not as hard. I got mine actually from a supermarket in Texas called HEB, Henry E. Butts. Um, I've actually been to the supermarket HEB stores there because my parents usually live in Texas when I lived in Oklahoma. So uh, yeah, they happened to have an online store that happened to be selling these. So I ordered one from all the way from Texas and I got a code for free shipping. So no tax, free shipping. It's expensive for a controller, it's like 70 bucks. But it is a really nice controller. Uh, it's probably one of the nicest I've ever used. The only downside is that it doesn't have touch sensitive uh, triggers. It's not analog as it were, it's just click on or off. There's no like, you know, slightly push. Other than that, uh, the buttons all feel good. It's got a good weight. Um, and you can use it, I can use it on my NES Mini, I can use it on my PC, I can use it on my Nintendo Switch to play Zelda. Buttons are bigger than uh, the Zelda one, but it's still got the offset controller scheme like Xbox does. Um, I don't know if I like that better. I did kind of like the uh, Wii U. It, it, it made your hands go forward more, so you had it felt more access maybe to the triggers, which were also not analog. But you know the Wii U has the, the both sticks up here. Of course, you know the PlayStation has both sticks in the middle. And then this is the Xbox configuration. Um, where is it backwards from the Xbox configuration? Now that I think about it, no, no, I just looked. It is, yeah, I don't look at that. Yeah, it is the Xbox configuration. So uh, you know it, it does the job good uh, either way. I mean, if I'm stick up here, thumb stick down here, it's still quick, an easy way. You know. And I guess this kind of just separates everything out. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure that there's some sort of ergonomic survey logic. They did. What else did I get? I got a ooh, ooh, case. It holds like 19 games. You know, I have one uh, physical game. I have um, two digital games. I've got Snipper Cliffs, which is fantastic fun, and Metro, or Metro, uh, Blaster Master Zero, which is basically Blaster Master 1 Remade, which is really good too. But got a, a solid case. The Switch fits inside it with uh, the Joy Cons attached. And it's got a, you know, there, and a little Velcro slap to help keep it down. Fits in nice without pushing any of the buttons. Uh, and then, you know, the cover. Right there. So. Uh, plenty of room for peripherals up in here, too. Um, I mean, see, the, the, this whole top area, it's enough to, like, put the power cord on, on pretty much. And, oops. Get in there, you. Zips up nice. Carrying handle. Switch on the go. I also got one thing that Nintendo probably doesn't want me to have. Oops, let's put the switch in the correct way to the dock. It is. Just got it in today and I've been messing with it. And it works great. This. Now, what is this? Well, what this is is a little platform you hooked up uh, via USB to your computer. Okay. And um, you run a program, and it allows you to back up your Amiibos to your computer and, and upload them. Now, say for my Link here, I can only back up and save Link data, but I can boost it. It also lets me edit it, so I can make him Max Smash Brother or whatever. The real nasty part of this, and the part I really got it for, quite honestly, is this little thing. It's called the power tag. What this is, is a rewritable near field amiibo. And there's sites out there where you can download 
a copy of every amiibo file. So all those limited edition amiibos that you can't find anymore and that sort of stuff, I can put them on here. So my uh, Legend of Zelda guy is going to be quickly populated with lots of clothes because of course I'm also using the little save reload cheat where you save the game before you use an amiibo. You pull out the amiibo, open the chest. Did you get a clothing item or something that you wanted? No? Okay, reload the game. Do it again. Rinse, repeat. Sometimes it takes 15 or 20 times, but that's 15 or 20 days you would have to spend to get it otherwise. So, I want it now. You can only use an each amiibo once a day, with the exception of Wolf Link, which you can use until he dies. Um, Wolf Link is a companion. He has his own hearts. He does fighting and stuff like that. So... That's my Switch fun. Uh, I've been having a blast playing through Zelda again. Um, I played all the way to pretty much the end of the game. I didn't find everything 100%, but I was ready to fight Ganon on the Wii U, so I had to start all over. On the Switch, I'm taking my time a lot more, too. Um, I've done two of the four Divine Beasts. Uh, I found a lot of shrines. Um, kind of re uh, done my attributes a bit differently. In the first game, I really didn't focus much on the Endurance Wheel, the Stamina Wheel, which is really important. I'd say to get at least stamina wheel 2 before you really start focusing on your hearts. That's just me. Do what you want. Because you do need 13 hearts in order to get the Master Sword. So, what's next on the agenda? How about we go look at another loot crate. This time the original loot crate. that just came in recently. So, what do we got now? T-shirt. Oh, stay. from um, Overwatch, I believe. Rawr. Winston from Overwatch. I will double check in the book in a second, but that's who it looks like to me. Uh, the, the theme is like primal, or uh, you know that sort of stuff, so wild or whatever. Primal, yeah, it is primal. So we got a, a, a pin that is a smiley face that has been clawed through, that's pretty cool. Day. We have a Predator bottle opener. Hear that thunder, boys and girls. A Jurassic World uh, warning sign. A die cast metal, very heavily sealed. Probably because you open it, it's like, oh no, it's not collectible anymore, but come on. I am not a uh, collectible type, especially when it comes to like, these little minis and stuff like that, so whatever. Um, and Anything that's like nowadays is that's that they mark as collectible, you know, it's not going to be that collectible or worth that much later. So whatever. It is a loot crate exclusive though, so I guess it's limited to only the twenty thousand other people who ordered loot crate. But what is it? It is a metal Angry Wolverine. And he is really strapped in there. So I'm not even sure I want to get him bother getting him out right now. But I did. Does he move or have any articulation? No. Is he metal? Yes. Is he Wolverine? Yes. Do I like Wolverine? Not really. He's okay. Uh, not one of my favorite X-Men, that's for sure. Not one of my favorite Marvel characters, that's for sure. So yeah, here's the Primal Magazine. Uh, anything good in here? Whoa. Baby. It's like a little hidden treasure map thing. That's interesting. I'll have to check that out later. 
Uh, yeah, Jurassic World, Electric Fight Fence, like I said. Uh, it is Overwatch, Winston, I win. Predator. Three variants, huh? I got the full raw adamantium Logan. There was also the old man Logan and the Logan Logan. And uh, the box turns into uh, T-Rex. So there's that. The Mega Crate, you would have gotten a PlayStation 4, Overwatch Collector's Edition. Jurassic World Lego, uh, a Predator deck building board game, or and a big giant Wolverine in his old timey uh, yellow brown. So keep this, keep that. So that was the salute crate. Pretty neat. Now we're going to look at a oh comics this week. Uh, didn't get any. Did I? Did I get some comics that I missed? Uh, my phone's not opening to me to look. I, yeah, I get digital comics, so they're either on my phone or my iPad. On Comixology. Kind of for two minds about the fact it was bought by Amazon, but it still seems to be doing good. Let's see here. No, I did not get any new comics um, this week. I'm only getting the two Spider-Man sex criminals saga and invincible so you know only five titles and they tend to come out uh, kind of close together just the way it is so let's look at five minute dungeon we played it a couple times uh, both two player and uh, kind of three player with my son um david that is the original box and the the, the retail box I got a Kickstarter backers edition box with featuring the Dungeon Master. He's the last boss in the regular game. The, the loot crate. Uh, loot crate uh. Kickstarter edition does happen to have a couple of extra bosses and stuff like that just for fun. It also comes with a statue of the first boss, the Baby Barbarian. Yes, it's that kind of game. It's silly. And literally it is five minutes. There is an app you can download for even more fun. Um, to do the timing of the five minutes and it's got voices and that sort of stuff. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and start it up real quick. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Okay. We have two choices of narrators right now. We're going to get a couple more, they said. So we'll just pick Connor. I think he's the one of the guys who created the game. And here we hit play. I think it is playing to like my headphones or something. Well, huh. there we go. Time or pause. Ha! Let's start over. Success. Three, two, one, go! So it's got kind of. Ah, I'm playing music at the same time. Time or pause. Time resume. Epic, like things every couple of minutes. You time know, it, is stopped. It goes back, it, uh, you know, it, it says, oh, you only have two minutes left, you better hurry, heroes, and you crap like that. Uh, rule book is short and succinct with a quick, quick stick in the back. There are five different hero types, ten total. There's basically like a guy and a girl version. Um, and they use the same deck to play, but they have different powers um, on each side. So you got a barbarian and a gladiator, a uh, Valkyrie or the paladin. A ninja or a rugi, sorry, thief, sorceress, wizard, uh, what we got? Oh, huntress and ranger. Um, and depending on how many players you are, that's how many cards you have in your hand pretty much all the time, except if you end up getting forced to draw more. We have discovered that uh, with that hand size, I want to mention, that we have eradicated it on the two player. Now, two players, the hand size is five. That's a total of 10 cards. It's a cooperative game. Three players is the hand size of four cards each. That's 12. Three players, okay, fine, 12. Four players is three cards. That's still 12. And then five players is also three cards. That's 15, but still. So we have upped the two player card hand size to six. 
So most of the time you have 12 total cards to try to access to beat. Way it works is before you fight the boss, he's got a little number down at the bottom. And that's the number of challenge cards you put in there. You also put in two extra challenge challenge cards per player. So say you end up fighting a warrior princess. And you see here she's a person and she's got a little shield and a little arrow. Well, your deck is mostly comprised of just like little Pokemon power cards. You got swords, arrows. There's five. There's shields, swords, arrows, like agility, sprint, dexterity, and scrolls. Um, so in order to beat her, between the players, we need to play a shield and an arrow. And, um, she's also a person. There are different powers that can say like defeat person. So there's that option also. Uh, players play cards in any order, is, you know, whatever. It's got the chess rules. Is once you play a card and let it go, it is played. So even if you overplay, too bad. If it's not the boss, say it's just his random mook, nobody has any shields or arrows, just play a card, even if it doesn't affect anything. Because once you play a card, you get to draw a card. You should always have six cards in your hands at least. There are some cards and powers that will let you draw more cards. So then until you get down below your minimum hand size, whatever. Um, time doesn't stop unless there's a card or power that stops time. So there is that, um, and it is five minutes, and then you get to the boss. Now the boss works a bit differently in that they have a lot of symbols, and you could only play cards if it could hurt the boss is one of the symbols. So you could end up stuck with a bunch of, you know, it, it's possible to get stuck and you can't beat the boss because you don't have any cards to play, and you don't have any of the characters with powers to draw extra cards. Um, you can also lose if you lose, run out of cards. When you actually discard, you physically discard, like the command is discard, it goes into your character's discard pile. Now your discard pile, there are plenty of powers and abilities that you can draw cards back out of it and put them back in your deck of your hand. However, played cards go away. So that's the thing about just willy-nilly trying to play cards to match somebody here. You know, say you don't have two scrolls. Well, you're missing a scroll, so you're going, well, I play this card. Okay, arrow. I just want to get rid of it, draw a card. There's, you want going through your deck. You go through it too fast, um, you're going to run out of cards, and you're not going to be able to beat the game. Now, that said, you have to go kind of fast because it's only five minutes, and you got to get through 20 challenges or more. Let's see. Uh, like the first guy is just 20 cards. Then it's 25. Then you got to beat 30, 35, 40. 20 but 10 extra dungeon cards and then final form of the dungeon master 50 cards and he has a beast of a challenge board to beat so yeah there's seven bosses to play each of course harder because there's more challenges to play and the boss is harder uh that's about all there is to it really it's just you know it's it's definitely more of a beer and pretzels type game it's quick, it's easy, it's a lot of fun. Um, if you see it in stores, I definitely at least say, find somebody maybe who the store will demo of it or whatever, but if you got a couple people, I would definitely suggest two, uh, three or more, if possible. It's, uh, you got, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 minutes to kill, or it's a party game where you just leave it out and you got you play one dungeon and then players rotate out, you swap characters, play the next dungeon, why not? Uh, I would say that I like, uh, I like it a lot, a lot of fun. That was five minute dungeon. One final thing is a story. We'll go ahead and wear our Orson World of Warcraft hat that's too small for my head for the song or story. Um, now, I just got a suggestion in that the song or story should be about a cat who can cast spells to make your junk backwards. Small. What other spells does it have? Well, that's up to the story, really. But the cat has the magic power to shrink your wiener. Mew. So, I am going to do a story this time. We're going to see how that all plays out for the horde. So, once upon a time, long, long ago, there was a young man named William who had a very special cat named Mittens. The official name of Mittens is, of course, the magical Sir Mittens, Wizard of All the Land. But for the point of the story and for alacrity, 
And f because we're friends with Mittens, we're just going to call him Mittens. Now, Mittens was a cat with a special magic power. Mittens could affect people in a special way, making certain parts of the person's body larger or bigger. Now, Mittens was still a cat, so his powers were limited to breasts on women and wieners on boys, because that's what I was suggested to do. Now, William and Mittens lived a very simple life. They didn't flaunt Mittens' power. Uh, William worked at the mill, you know, helping grind uh, wheat into flour. And he got all the flour he could eat, come home and make lots of good bread for him and Mittens, and was very happy. Until one day, some bully came and started really messing with William, and Mittens just couldn't take it anymore, and shrank the bullies wiener down to an inordinately small size. Now the boy went running and crying about the witchcraft cat to the city council and the trial was held. So the guards came and they took Mittens and kept him until his trial date where a judge would hear the arguments and inspect the evidence, that being the bully's teeny tiny weenie, and uh, of course William's suspiciously huge wiener make a judgment. Unfortunately, William was very ugly, so his very large wiener did not help him get dates too much. Uh, it also made him sort of a pariah in town. That's why he worked in the mill and not selling bread outside the mill. So the court date came, but before Mittens could be tried and suddenly executed as a wizard witch cat, the king himself came and pardoned Mittens because he had a royal duty. He needed Mittens to sneak across the battlefields and enemy lines all the way to the enemy king's castle and shrink the enemy king's wiener, thus making it so that the enemy king would have no confidence and would quickly surrender. Now, William and Mittens were not interested in war or politics, but it was either that or Mittens got the axe. So Mittens agreed. Dressed all in black like a ninja, Mittens creeped quietly across the battlefield and the common uh, border forest that separated the two kingdoms. Now, in the middle of the forest was a river, and both sides of the river bridge, the only bridge left, was guarded by, on one side, of course, the good guy kingdom, and on the other side, the bad guy kingdom. We will go with the kingdom of Good Nodia and the kingdom of Bad Badia, because we're simple, and I'm making this up as I go along. So, Mittens was very Eve horse uh, could have just walked across the bridge. However, uh, while he would have gotten past the Kingdom of Good Goodia guards, even though he was officially not there, the Bad Badia guards would probably stop this strange-looking ninja cat. So Mittens had to figure something out. Well, using his secret super cat ninja skills and the cover of darkness, Mittens simply crawled along the very edge of the bridge. Nobody was the wiser, nobody guards noticed, although it was very tense when he accidentally almost had to sneeze, although he didn't. So he safely made it across the bridge and continued to the woods. Soon after he made it to the town surrounding the castle of the Bad Badian King. He stripped himself of his ninja gear because he wanted to keep a low profile, inconspicuous alley cat look. And he wandered through the town, taking a sight and seeing that the Bad Badian people were pretty much regular people, just like the Good Goodians. And so Mittens was a little hesitant to uh, really mess with their king, as it seemed like everything was pretty much the same, and he was wondering why the fight even needed to happen. And then he made it to the castle, and he saw that the reason that the fight had to happen and was happening was because this king was pretty much a jerk. So Mittens decided to commit to his actions. Um, after observing the king and seeing him treat his servants bad, his royal guard who had this elevated status treated his servants bad, he was generally a jerk. So Mittens decided to get back at the king. Now, he had a choice to make. Could he shrink the king's wiener, or should he do something else? Poop in his food, shoes, litter box. What would make the most lasting impression? 
Well, what Minns decided to do, rather than humiliate the king, is to give the king the biggest penis ever recorded. It was 12 feet long and over eight feet around. What the unfortunate part was, when the king got aroused next, after his huge wiener appeared and everyone was new and odd, a nice breeze blew and, you know, the king died of blood loss because there's not enough blood in the body to make that penis get any bigger and he died. So, the old king is dead and he had no heirs, so they decided to become a representative theocracy run by these really strange priest women. All who had suspiciously large breasts. Mittens returned home, and while he didn't fulfill his mission in the way meant, he still saw, stopped the war and was hailed as a hero. William was given 42 pieces of gold, and Mittens was given the option to go live with the king, and he of course chose to go back and live his peaceful life with William. Until the line of people, of course, that started you know, going around the corner, all a bunch of men and women who wanted to be enhanced in some way or another. Um, this, of course, drove William and Mittens to fits, so they took their remaining gold and moved to a small cottage out in the middle of nowhere where they lived out their lives happily, peacefully, forever. Until Mittens died three years later because he was still in camp. The end. So, that was my story. Uh, that's all I got for today. No game. Sorry, I just... I've been too busy playing stupid Zelda to even think about another game. Uh, and when I wasn't playing Zelda, I was messing with my NES Mini. Bad person. And then Destiny. Oh, yeah, let's, let's talk about that for a second. Destiny came out with the final patch, the Age of Triumph. They also released the Destiny 2 trailer when they've shown that, yes, everything gets blown up. You lose everything. Sorry. Uh, but the Age of Triumph has a bunch of different fun stuff to do. So when I'm not playing Zelda or messing with the NES Mini, I'm playing... Age of Triumph, which is unfortunate because I'd really like to get back to Ghost Recon Wildlands and River City Ransom Underground and the list goes on. But anyway, so that's it. What do we got? We got two loot crates, really fun game called Five Minute Dungeon. We talked about Mittens the Magical Cat. Uh, I talked about all kind of fun, nasty accessories I've got for the Switch, including the Action Replay Power Saves. CodeJunkies.com is where you can get that. It comes with one of those power tabs. You can get a bunch if you want. It also writes to, to uh, NF, it's like 215 tags if you want to make your own little tags. Although you shouldn't sell them. I see you people on Etsy selling freaking fake Amiibo power tags for like 30 bucks. That's not nice. You're profiting directly, completely off of someone else's code. That's like pirating games and burning them out of CD and selling them. Bad. Anyhow, so until next time, I'm James. This has been The James Show. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, blah, 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 you name it, uh, The James Show Zero Zero. And comments, always welcome. Talk to me on the Twitter, on the Facebook, on the YouTube, on the Twitch. Uh, you can also email me, james at thejamesshow.com. Hope to hear from you. I will respond and with lots of love, despite how malice-filled your emails or comments might be. And until next time, keep being cool and watch out for Mittens. He's kind of a sneaky one. Yeah.